Chinese health and ethics officials are investigating a scientist's claim that he helped create the world's first genetically edited babies. He Jiankui, with his video announcement on YouTube, shocked and horrified the international scientific community. Uh, there is an international agreement not to edit the genes of human embryos intended for pregnancy. He says twin girls were born earlier this month using in vitro fertilization. The embryos were modified before implantation using CRISPR. That's technology that allows scientists to modify specific genes in the DNA. The hospital, named in his ethical approval documents, has denied involvement in the procedures. His purpose, he says, was to make the babies resistant to HIV. Right after we sent her husband's sperm into her egg, we're also sending a little bit of protein and instruction for a gene surgery. When Lulu and Lazla was just a single cell, this surgery removed the doorway through which HIV entered to infect people. Now, some scientists are calling the research monstrous and they're warning of unintended consequences off-target effects, as they're called, like diseases later in life that we may not know about. And more than 120 Chinese scientists condemned the research on the social media platform Weibo, saying in a joint statement that the trial is a huge blow to the reputation of Chinese biomedical research. They write this, quote, directly experimenting on humans is nothing but crazy. As soon as a living human is produced, no one could predict what kind of impact it will bring. Joining us now is Benjamin Hurlbut, Associate Professor at Arizona State University's School of Life Scientists. He is here in Hong Kong for the Genome Editing Summit, where He Jiankui is set to speak on Wednesday. And sir, thank you for joining us here to, to lend some clarity on this mind-boggling story. Um, if these claims of these gene-edited babies are true, does this open a sort of Pandora's box? You know, yes and no. It, it is a first, and it's a significant first, and it's a worrisome first. And yet at the same time, uh, it's simply a single instance, and there's still ample opportunity for the wider scientific community and indeed the wider world to uh, consider what's at stake here and set limits if necessary. Yeah, so, so let's consider that. He Jiankui says that these twin girls had their DNA altered to make them HIV resistant. What other kinds of gene editing could this lead to? Well, you know, I mean, I think there's a vast range of possible applications, all the way from correcting disease-causing disease genes, single genes that cause diseases, often in some cases very se severe diseases, um, to much more frivolous uh, applications. You're talking about designer babies, altering eye color, even IQ. Well, uh, to be clear, there are many features of our bodies that are encoded in our genes, but in extremely complex ways. So only the sorts of changes that can be affected through a, a change to a single gene or a relatively small number of sites in the genome will be possible. Uh, and yet that still remains, you know, a fairly large number of, of uh, different types of traits. Got it. And, and, you know, fears of designer babies aside, is there any good that could come out of this? For example, if there were strict international regulations, because eliminating inheritable diseases, that's a good thing, isn't it? Well, I think one important good that can come out of this is a broader, more robust, and in a sense, more urgent conversation about what's at stake here. Because in my view, what's at stake here is not simply whether this technology is safe or even whether it's appropriate to apply it uh, in this particular way, but rather the ways in which we relate to our children, the kinds of procreation that we engage in, the, the ways in which they become projects for us mm. or not. Now, human beings and the human genome will continue to evolve, but, but do you think from this point on, we will evolve in a more hastened way because of technologies like CRISPR? Uh, I don't buy into that kind of speculation, yeah. although Yes, I mean, there is the possibility that with application of these sorts of techniques, it will change us. It will change the, the uh, face of the human species in important ways. But I think the changes are actually more significant on a sort of a social level than they are on a biological level. Let me mm. give just one example. So in this case, there's, there's essentially no medical reason for making this alteration. Uh, the reason that the researchers gave 
uh, is that the father of these children uh, has HIV and therefore apparently faces forms of discrimination and stigma in Chinese culture uh, and wishes for his children to never find themselves in a circumstance where they have to face those same problems. But that's not a biological problem, mm. that's a social problem. This is a genetic fix to a problem of social stigma. And that is a dangerous door to open. There are many features of our appearances that, are, that have, you might say, stigma attached to them. Uh, and yet, sort of accepting that uh, and dealing with it by making changes to our appearance instead of our attitudes towards diversity Absolutely. Uh, is a serious concern. Professor Hobo, we'll leave it at that, but you leave us with a lot to consider. Thank you. Thank you.